Recall from the previous video that we established that the optimal emission fee is going to be equal to the marginal cost of reducing pollution. Now let's translate this concept into a two company scenario. So if we have two producers in the society, let's say these are N and Bill. So N and Bill produce output that generates pollution and we would like to reduce it by 50 units. Let's say that's a requirement from the government and we establish the equilibrium fee at $50. That's 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 the assumption. Now, what we can notice on the graph, and this is pure hypothetical, is that at the $50 fee, that would be equal to the marginal cost of reducing 40 units of pollution for N and it would also equal to the marginal cost of reducing 10 units by bill. Now what do we notice? We notice that if N reduces 40 units of pollution, bill reduces another 10, we are achieving, we are achieving our 50 units of reduction. But these 50 units of reduction are not proportional. We are not reducing pollution by 25 and 25 units. And let's see why this is a better case, a better case than reducing 25 and 25. For instance, if we do reduce 25, pollution, 25 units of pollution each, let's say that would be here and 25 would be somewhere over here. What do we notice? In case of N, the reduction, the reduction, the cost of reduction, right? The marginal cost of reduction of 25 units would be less than the tax savings. The fact that N is not going to pay $50 for every 25 units of reduction. Whereas for Bill, the 25 units of reduction of pollution over here, this would be the entire marginal cost. And that would be much more, that would be much more because it's beyond the efficiency point of Bill. The marginal cost or let's say the cost of reducing 25 units of pollution, that would be more than the money he could save in taxes by not polluting. So for Bill, it's inefficient, but we would like to have this efficiency for both companies. And we know that both companies will allocate their resources until the fee of emission is equal to their marginal cost of reducing the pollution. And that happens to be at 40 units for N and 10 units for Bill. And what is the takeaway here? The takeaway is that the, if, the companies, if the companies allocate their pollution reduction depending on, on their cost, on their marginal costs, then we can still achieve our outcome, our result, but we can do them, we can do this at a lower cost than if we force a proportional distribution by the government. So ideally we would like the companies to decide on the market how much they can reduce the pollution. And by the way, even though, even though one company reduces pollution more and the other reduces pollution less, let's say N reduces 40 units of pollution, her cost of reducing the pollution is this area below the marginal cost. So this is the entire triangle over here. And we'll compare this with the cost of reducing pollution for Bill because Bill only reduces 10 units of pollution. So that's a smaller triangle. So we might say that, okay, Bill has to pay less to reduce pollution, but that's not true because, because we also have the tax for the actual production. And since N reduces 40 units of pollution, it means that she does not reduce the remaining 20 units. We assume that she can produce at most 60 units of pollution. So if she reduces 40 of them, then she actually pollutes for 20 units, meaning that this will be a tax that N has to incur. So this is an additional cost. This is the tax from the fee that N will incur. But let's compare that to Bill now. Well, Bill will produce the remaining 50 units. Out of the 60 total units that he is able to produce, right? The 60 units of pollution that he's able to produce, he reduces 10 units, meaning that the remaining 50 by definition are gonna be polluted. He's going to pollute another 50 units. So this is going to be the, the, the tax that Bill incurs. And we can see that it is much more than N. So even though, even though N has a higher cost of actual pollution reduction, she has a lower tax. Where the scenario, the story goes different for Bill. Bill has a lower, a lower cost of reducing the pollution, but a higher tax. The point is that at the end of the day, they both achieve their efficiency because they allocate their resources when the fee of the emission is equal to the marginal cost of one guy and the marginal cost of the other guy. Hope this makes sense and we are done.